The Islanders take two out of three on their California road trip. We have our key takeaways from Saturday's win in San Jose, plus another injury strikes this time to the blue line. We'll have the latest, all that, and a lot more on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Monday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. We have got a lot to discuss on today's show. But first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question for us, a comment, maybe a topic you'd like us to discuss on a future episode of the show, feel free to send us an email. The email address, LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever it is that's on your mind. You could also follow the show on Twitter at LockedOnIsles, and you could follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at IceWars, N-Y-R-V-S-N-Y-I. We'll keep you up to date on all the latest Islanders news, notes, and happenings. And I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. So join me for some instant insight and analysis. And it's always great to talk a little Islanders hockey with fellow Islander fans, game time or anytime. So please do reach out. The Islanders come away with a 4-1 to win over the San Jose Sharks Saturday night. And this was a game that the Islanders were not going to win any points for art- artistic intent. It wasn't a thing of beauty, but it was efficient. And after a rather sluggish first 10, 15 minutes of this game, the Islanders really were in control. And even though they fell behind one to nothing, I think from the time that J.G. Pajot tied the game with his very uh, well-executed and and pretty shorthanded breakaway goal with a little less than four minutes left in the first period, I think from that point on, there was very little doubt about who was going to win this game? I mean, the Sharks have been struggling all year long. They are not playing great hockey. They are especially vulnerable defensively. And I think the Islanders just took their time and sort of regrouped after falling behind early and just took control of the game. So, no, it wasn't, you know, a dominant performance by the Islanders. It wasn't one of those games where you say, you know, this team could play this way and beat the Boston Bruins or the Carolina Hurricanes or, you know, one of the better teams in the league without any doubt that they would just go out and kick a little butt and and everything would be great. No. But when you're playing the San Jose Sharks, a team that is in the Bedard sweepstakes right now and Actually, very close to, you know, they have the worst record in the Western Conference coming into the game against the Islanders. You knew that this team was just playing well enough to solidly be better than the San Jose Sharks and to beat the San Jose Sharks. And that is what they accomplished. I think the Pajot goal was outstanding. It was the turning point of the game. And then... You know, after that, it was just a lot of hustle and a lot of uh, just solid play overall for this team. Nothing spectacular, nothing uh, earth shattering. And yet, you know, they're just getting the job done efficiently. And look, style points are secondary. You've got 11 games left in the season. And we'll talk a little bit more about the playoff race because it is important. And, you know, with just two or three weeks left in the regular season, 
every game matters. But for the Islanders, you know, we're seeing some players just step up. And it's not the players that you necessarily uh, expect. It is your J.G. Pajos. It's your Pierre Engvalls. And Engvall, you know, extended his point streak with an assist on the Ryan Pulak power play goal. And, yeah, the power play, even though they did score on that goal late in the second period, uh, early, rather, in the second period by Pulak, it's still struggling. And I, I, I kind of liked the idea that the two assists on that power play goal by Ryan Pulak, Hudson Fashing, and Pierre Engvall, two guys who typically are third or fourth line kind of players, Engvall more of a third line guy, Fashing has been mostly third or fourth line during his time with the Islanders. But two guys who are, A, playing well lately, they're hot. B, give the power play a little new blood. They're excited for the opportunity to be out there with the extra attacker. And C, they've earned this time. I still don't like the way the power play has been attacking I, I don't like the lack of puck movement, the lack of player movement without the puck, the the way that they come into the zone. They can't skate it in. Dump and chase is sort of a 50-50 proposition at best, but getting that power play goal certainly helps. And just sort of, again, doing things well enough against a struggling hockey team to win the game is appreciated. A little bit of a surprise, not a lot, that Ilya Sorokin played all three games on this West Coast road trip. I thought that was an interesting choice by Lane Lambert, but Sorokin, 29 saves in 30 shots, some of them very, very strong saves. I think he really did well and got the job done. And again, the important thing now you're going to see if there's 11 games left, Ilya Sorokin may play eight or nine of them until they've nailed down a playoff spot. The key is to not overuse Sorokin so he tires and loses effectiveness, but to maximize the chances of winning every game you can. And, you know, for the Islanders, that's going to be the key down the stretch because every game is going to matter. And again, we'll sort of break down what the, the playoff situation is today and throughout this week as we get closer and closer to the end of the season. But look, J.G. Pajot, the only Islander with two points on the evening, and I think he played particularly well for the Islanders and again, we're seeing new line combinations from Lane Lambert, Horvat, Lee, and Holmstrom. Uh, that didn't work exceptionally well, but uh, Horvat certainly had his chances. Nelson, Engvall, and Palmieri worked nicely. Pajot, Parise, and Fashing worked extremely well, with Fashing now showing some chemistry with Pajot. And then Zizekas, Martin, and Clutterbuck uh, getting the job done as the fourth line. Pelican, Mayfield, Romanoff, and Pulak, Aho and Dobson on the back line. I'm still not happy with Aho and Dobson, but uh, unfortunately for the Islanders, uh, some injury news in that game in San Jose, and we'll talk about that uh, and a whole lot more. We'll have our unsung hero of the game and our go to the game all coming up on this episode of the Locked on Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Athletic Greens. Our next partner has a product I literally use every day. I started taking AG1 because I wanted one supplement to meet all of my nutritional needs. What is this stuff? Well, with one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adoptogens to help you start your day right. This special blends in, blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all these things. 
and it's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. It's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day, and that's it. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. So the Islanders go out and, and get the win. And we talked before this road trip started that two out of three would be the minimum that they needed, that that's what was required. Win, get four points. Five would be great. Six would have been perfect. But you take the four points, you get the two W's, and you move on. And now it gets a little tougher with a game coming up tomorrow against the Toronto Maple Leafs and a certain former Islander who everybody uh, you know, doesn't need any introduction. We're talking, obviously, about John Tavares. Meanwhile, Sebastian Ajo left the game late in the first period. He took a hit by uh, Kevin LeBanc and did not return. Looked like he was hit in the head, although, again, waiting for some kind of an injury update. We should know more at some point today. Monday's practice is most likely. When we'll hear something to update us about Ajo as the Islanders head back to the uh, to, to Long Island on uh, Sunday, and then they'll have their morning skate uh, or practice on Monday, morning skate on Tuesday before the game. So check the Twitter feed and we'll update you uh, on that situation. But Ajo leaving the game late in the first period did not return. They still have Parker Weatherspoon on the roster. So he maybe uh, have to step in if Ajo is out for tonight's game, but we will certainly keep you posted. And look, Ajo, he's been playing a little bit better lately, but I, I still think Ajo and Dobson is not a good combination. Their weaknesses are too similar defensively, but we'll see whether or not Ajo is available. Hopefully he is, but if not, we will likely see Parker Weatherspoon. Maybe they call up Samuel Bolduc again. Whatever move they make, we'll let you know. But uh, you don't want to lose one of your defensemen this late in the game. You're still without Matthew Barzal. But we're seeing the importance of uh, the return of J.G. Pajot, who really uh, ignited the team with that shorthanded goal. And he had a two-point game. And that was definitely a plus. Now, once Ajo left the game... You had to mix and match your defensemen, and yet all of the defensemen seem to play very well. We're going to do our unsung hero and our goat of the game. The unsung hero, I'm going with Alexander Romanov. He had an assist. He was a plus two. He and uh, Noah Dobson leading the Islanders in that category. Uh, and just overall, I have to say, that Romanov, he had four block shots in this game and a hit, played a little over 20 minutes uh, of ice time and just did a solid job. You know, he didn't score a goal, didn't make headlines, but I like what he's been doing, especially over the last 10 games. So uh, props to Alexander Romanov. He'll be the unsung hero of the game and, and just a solid effort all the way around for uh, Alec Alexander Romanov. He has cleaned up his game in the defensive zone over the last, let's say, eight to 10 games. And I think, you know, playing with different partners has been definitely a part of that. You know, he started the game with uh, Ryan Pulak as his partner, but then when Ajo got hurt, like I said, it was more or less mix and match. Uh, as for the go to the game, it, it, it's really tough to pick anybody. This was one of those solid but unspectacular games, and I don't think anybody stood out as playing particularly poorly. Um, I, I really don't have 
a, a player who to me stands out as the goat of this game. And, you know, nobody took any particularly lazy penalties. Nobody uh, played particularly poorly. If anything, you know, I'm going to just cite the power play, even though they scored a goal, uh, they've got to just, they've got to be better. And down the stretch, it's going to have a big effect on the Islanders if they can't get some more points when they have the man advantage. And it, it is going to be critical, but overall a solid performance by the New York Islanders. And you look at the standings right now, and the Islanders are indeed in the first wild card spot, which is fantastic to see. But again, there's that little caveat of games in hand. Islanders have played 71 games. They have 11 left. They have 80 points. Pittsburgh, two points behind the Islanders, but two games in hand. Florida, three points behind the Islanders with two games in hand. Florida is the team that's been hot lately. They are 7-2-1 and one in their last 10 games. They've won their last two. Other teams kind of starting to fade right now. Detroit, way back with 69 points. They're 11 points behind the Islanders, even though they have you know, more games in hand, three games in hand, they're not going to catch the Islanders unless they almost win out. Ottawa, nine points behind the Islanders with a couple of games in hand. Buffalo, eight points back. They are falling. Washington, falling. It's really now coming into focus for the most part as three teams, the Islanders, Penguins, Panthers, battling for the final two playoff spots and with 11 games to go if the islanders can win seven if they can even just go seven three and one i think they are in the playoffs seven three and one would be 15 more points that would give them 95 they could probably even go six three and two or six four and one in those final 11 games and sneak in unless both Pittsburgh and Florida just go on a big tear. And the, the frustrating thing about it is that both of them are capable of that. And both of them are also capable of losing three or four in a row. I think the thing about all three of these teams, the Islanders included, is that they really are capable of beating anybody on any given night, but also playing poorly and losing to anyone on any given night. All three of these teams are significantly better at home, but Florida, I think, has the biggest disparity. And, you know, Florida has seven, uh, six home games left, rather, at this point. And then the rest are road games. That will help the Islanders a little bit. But the Islanders have more road games as well. So it's really going to be uh, an interesting stretch drive. The Islanders, Pittsburgh, and Florida, the three biggest competitors for those last two wild card spots in the Eastern Conference. I don't think the Islanders can catch the Rangers for third place in the Metropolitan Division. You have 11 games left. You're 10 points behind the Rangers, and the Rangers have a couple of games in hand. So it's wild card time, and then it's realistically. You're going to face either the Bruins if you're the second wild card or the winner of the Metropolitan, which is probably Carolina, but still could be New Jersey in the first round. And uh, that's what the Islanders are fighting for right now. But overall, uh, a solid, solid uh, two out of three on this West Coast road trip. They won the two games you expected them to win. They struggled in the one game that we thought they might lose. No big surprises there. And now, well, it just becomes a question of figuring out, you know, what do you do down the stretch? Because the schedule isn't so easy. We have got more to discuss on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. We will take a peek at the schedule and, and what it means for the Islanders down the stretch. What are some of the toughest games they have left? We'll talk a little more about Bo Horvat, who I'm not all that worried about, but he is 
certainly in an offensive slump right now. And we'll have our Islanders birthday of the day. All that and more still to come on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories, then you've got to try a Built Bar, the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, all Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in great flavors like churro, coconut almond, peanut butter brownie. I love the cookies and cream. That's my favorite. And the macros are great. Each bar averages just 130 calories, only four grams of sugar, but they pack a whopping 17 grams of protein. Now, you could still order Built Bars at Built.com and have boxes delivered directly to your door. But now if you want one right away, just head to your local Walmart or Sam's Club and you can just pick up a box and bring it home with you. So check out Built Bar, the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar at Built.com. You can thank me later. So Bo Horvat, you know, he is slumping right now offensively. There is no question that he's struggling. But You know, he had five shots on goal Saturday, and he's getting a lot of quality scoring chances. But, you know, Capo Kakinen made some big stops for San Jose in that game and really helped shut the door. But, you know, you saw Anders Lee uh, on the bench after that golden scoring opportunity give a little tap on the shoulder to Bo Horvat. And here's what Lee said after the game to the athletic. He said, we've been talking. It's one of those stretches where we like how we're playing. It's just not going. I think we're making a difference every night. It's just maybe not showing right now on the score sheet. And I think Barzal being out of the lineup is certainly affecting Horvat's productivity. Uh, but Realistically, uh, you know, Horvat, it's been 12 games since Barzal got hurt. He leads the team with 35 shots on goal, and yet he basically only has one goal in those 11 games, and that was the first game after Barzal's injury. The fact that he's playing well but isn't getting the puck in the net, you know, look, Simon Holmstrom at this point, not a first-line player. Hudson Fashing had a turn, but he's not a first-line player. Josh Bailey, who sat out again Saturday at this stage in his career, really not a legitimate first-line player. The lack of that other forward who can help the team get more chances and, and just sort of be comfortable with Horvat and play you know, complementary hockey to Bo Horvat That is sort of missing right now in this Islanders lineup. And hopefully we see Horvat just get a little puck luck because he really hasn't had enough of that. As for the schedule uh, down the stretch, you know, this is going to be important for the Islanders to really pick things up and, and do well in this final 11 games. And look, the next four games, Toronto tomorrow, and we'll have a full preview of that game on tomorrow's show, in Columbus, Buffalo, and New Jersey. So that's two teams that would not make the playoffs if the season ended, and two teams that would, with New Jersey being a potential first-round playoff opponent. You know, you gotta you got to get points in at least three of those four games with at least two of them being actual wins. So we'll see how the Islanders handle it, but the schedule doesn't necessarily get easy. Time now for our Islanders birthday of the day. And Sunday was the 65th birthday of former Islanders forward Mats Hallin, the Swedish native drafted by the Capitals in the seventh round Back in 1978, made his debut with the Islanders in 1982-83. That was his NHL debut. And in 30 games that year, he scored seven goals, had 14 points, and played in seven playoff games and scored a goal there. 
So Matt Tallinn got his Stanley Cup ring with the Islanders that year, played 40 games the following year with the Islanders when they went to the Stanley Cup final. And then in 84-85, had his final season on Long Island. Never played more than 40 games in a season for the Isles. Then played two years with the Minnesota North Stars before headed heading back to Sweden. His best game as an Islander, it's easy. March 19th, 1983 at the Old Barn, the Nassau Coliseum. Islanders facing the Philadelphia Flyers. And in this game, Matt Tallinn, three shots on goal, three goals. He was a plus three, uh, uh, excuse me, a plus two with all three goals coming at even strength. That was his only career NHL hat trick. And the Islanders beat the Philadelphia Flyers by a score of nine to two in that one. Bob Froze was the goalie for the Flyers while uh, Roland Melanson got the win for the Isles. But Matt Tallinn, a, a steady two-way checking kind of a forward with a hat trick in that game. He had seven goals all year, three of them coming in that game against the Philadelphia Flyers. So we'll be back tomorrow to preview the game against the Toronto Maple Leafs. I want to thank everyone for making Locked On Islanders your first listen today. Now make your second listen game-to-game NHL. Every moment, every top performance, every result, Locked On Game-to-Game covers every contest from across the National Hockey League with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow game-to-game on Locked On NHL. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. That's going to do it for this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.